Thank you for joining us for this Offsite Construction Series. I'm Audrey Grabesic, your host of Offsite Dirt. It's exciting to see not only what's happening in the United States, but what is particularly happening in other countries. Today we have a special guest from the Netherlands. We have Carl van Duren with Next Gen Houses. Carl is gonna to explain to us a little bit more about his program, his kit of parts, and how Next Gen Houses have begun. Hi Carl, it's nice to see you. Same for me, Audrey. And thank you for having me uh, on your show. We are uh, certainly excited you're here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's all about the technique, eh? so that's, uh, that's, that's okay. Uh, well, first of all, we started from scratch with Next Gen Houses. And uh, before you make decisions, you have to make choices based on knowledge. So I first uh, had to study and, and uh, get a good idea about what it, what it is, uh, modular construction. I uh, co-founded in the past uh, many different companies, uh, and among that was also a castle rental company in which we used uh, uh, temporary building facilities. So from that company, I started in uh, 2016 Next Gen Smart Model Ability. And now I have started uh, Next Gen Houses, which is a spin off of that company. And, uh, and what, what is the particularly special about your Next Gen Houses, Carl? Well, Next Gen Houses has, uh, it, it, it's, a system, it's a system of building, but it's also a building system, so to say. Uh, I like to think of it as modular 5.0. Uh, we, we use, we use, well, we start from, we start from what, I, what we call primitives. And primitives are the smallest building blocks, which we then subassemble and then we make assemblies, and then we go to a building part, or a suction part, or a component. So in fact, we use modular, but not in a volumetric type of sense. We, I also have a rental company where we have uh, about 150 containers, and we had all the advantages and disadvantages of containers. So at a certain stage, I thought, well, we need to have another way of constructing our, our well, in that company we make kitchens and uh, restaurants. And then I came up with the idea of making that and using the design for this assembly technique to create another system of building, so to say, and which is in fact modular. So we have an, another, a, a certain uh, advantages to other systems. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's modular. Start with the primitives, well, I said, but it's also dynamic. We can have a load bearing structure, which either is light, medium, or heavy. And that, that should be done because I want to save as much as material as possible. Because I don't think the problem is energy, as long as the sun shines and the wind blows, there's a lot of energy, but the problem is material. So we have to be very conscious of the materials we are using. So that's why I chose the dynamic and also hybrid. It's a hybrid system. So we can either use wood or, or, or steel. Oh, or that's steel. wonderful. So that gives yeah. you a lot of flexibility. And the right. projects that you're currently working on, how many, uh, how many houses have you already designed with this type of offsite construction? We have designed about 30 houses, but but we are still in the process of uh, uh, scaling up, so to say. And Beautiful. the reason, and the reason why I, I, I well, we are a Dutch company, and I have also uh, made a, a, a website in in English, because we have the ambition to also work in the U.S. with our system. Well, it's, I think uh, it's I think it's time for that. I think we are starting to see in our country, we're starting to see 
volumetric, we're starting to see panelization, we're starting to see containers being the forefront, especially you've touched on so many different things. We know we've got a shortage yeah. of labor, we've got yeah. material waste that is um, really, we're, we're trying to conserve as much as we can. We are looking at different unique building materials. So I love to see that you have kind of conglomerated all these different aspects to be able to do your type of home. Right, and it, it, I, I've, I've combined all these elements in one system. Also, to, because if you if you design for this assembly, yeah, or you design for this, or design for the adaptability, that's that's really the way to go. Because you can reuse all the materials you have made. <laughs> we uh, make our materials. We we put a, 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 the building block, so to say. We put a QR code on it, so we know what is in that bu a building uh, system, a building element. Whether it's steel, whether it's wood, what is the insulation? We use we use bio-based insulation, also because of we think we want to save the planet. So that is basically one of the the the, the, the thoughts behind creating the system. I love it. And I love that you're blending the technology with also your design. Is there a specific capacity? Are you designing these structures, you know, like 15 feet by 100 feet? Are you, is there a specific parameter of how you're designing these? Or can you take any plan and convert them into your build system? In fact, the last thing is what we can do. But you have to think if that's something you want to do. Because I believe, in, I believe in the way to go to affordable housing is to use mass customization in, in trying to make your building blocks and allow as much uh, design freedom. And that's why we have created this system. So we can, we can build any type of building. Uh, we can use domes in our building or a lot of uh, windows or whatever. But it's, re it's what you want to. In, in fact, I'm working on a uh, digital uh, building uh, system so that architects can also use our system to create new buildings. I love that. I love that you are expanding the opportunities for others to learn this. Um, I met another colleague of mine that uh, it actually is in your neck of the woods. I don't know if you've heard of G-Builder they actually have a platform that connects BIM and these other technologies to one surface area so that they can then create a quicker system of replica, you know, replicating the same design. Yeah. It sounds very similar. It sounds yeah. like your system is really about the approach of duplication and that's where we can actually strive to be better to build more affordable projects. Wouldn't you agree? Right, I agree. I, f I totally agree. I fully agree because you have to repeat uh, the building blocks. That's that's how you can make them, yeah, more affordable. And another thing we have done in our next gen houses uh, group is that we we control the whole building system from design to production or, or engineering, what you call it, production and also assembling. And we also like to want to partly own the building, so to say. So you're also not only building it, but you're also renting it. So you're kind of like the full, you're like the full like global this. system of your own projects. Yeah, right. That's, that's, that's the idea. I love because it. Because I've learned, sorry. I love it. I think that's brilliant. Oh. And I think we need more of that. I think that it's, it's the wave of the future. It, it's indeed, I think, the wave of the future. And, and what you know and, and, and what you read and what you, is that a lot of costs appear in the in the value chain eh? so we want to create as much value by more or less cutting out the middleman like uh, Dell did in the, in the past for instance what's happening in your country right now are you seeing the same things we are where we need more housing is rental yeah. you know really high are you seeing more people wanting to own their house what's happening in in the Netherlands well historically people wanted to own their houses and they still do, but uh, the 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 how would you call it the land, and and uh, it's it's too expensive, 
and the buildings, the, 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 they also, the, the houses, they become too expensive. So for a normal wager, it's impossible to own your own building. So that's why I think there's a lot of uh, uh, demand for affordable housing. And, and we want to produce affordable housing and we can produce affordable housing. Yeah. And in Holland, you have a lot of companies who are looking at housing. And, uh, but in Holland, as you know, Holland is a very small country. So the, so the, so the, uh, the, the land is very expensive. And uh, the, high, the prices in the houses the last couple of months raised by about 20%. So it's, it's virtually impossible for people to buy a house. So, but, it's, but, the same, but the same is in the US and the same is in New Zealand or in Australia or in Japan. It's a worldwide problem. Yes, I agree with you. So if you were to start in any part of the United States, is there a certain target or a certain area? And do you want to come here and design build? Or are you thinking you would have your product from your country and then transported to the United States? Well, to start up, I want to trans transport it from Holland to the United States. And then later on, I want to, to uh, have co-makers, so to say, who help us build uh, our our building blocks to make the products in the U.S. But in fact, what we have is a uh, call that uh, a, a, a more an assembly type of product than a building type of product because you need that because the labor is too expensive to keep it affordable. You have to have short delivery times, and and you have to have uh, let's say. It's, it's, it's not on, on unskilled labor, but you have to have labor, the cost of labor, you have to control the cost of labor. And nowadays, also the cost of materials, because wood is going through the roof, steel is going through the roof, and it's not only because of uh, COVID, it's because of materials become more scarce. I, I agree with you, and we're seeing those same challenges. What percentage in the Netherlands is modular right now? Are you guys building in that form, or is it more of a panelized no, structure? It's it's not so much. The percentage are not so high. Everybody are talking about modular, but it's it's not the. the we are a, a more historic, based on the concrete and the bricks and mortar, so to say. And now there's a, a new attempt of trying to get more modular uh, structures in the, in the Netherlands. But it's still, there's a lot of uh, yeah, people who still want to have a concrete house. So it needs more adaption. And on the other hand, modular, as you know, if you say modular, people think about containers, container type of building. While we, we don't make container type of building, but it's what the people think about. So you have to translate that. That's also one of the reasons why I'm in, 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 your, uh, in, your, in your program, so to say, in your show. It's not something I do regularly or, or whatever, <laughs> but, but uh, I think I need to get out of work. So. I, I agree with you. And it's interesting because volumetric or modular, you know, modular here is typically, you know, when we're talking single family design, yeah. it's wood frame and the yeah. entire four walls or the entire box is completely finished, right? So we have floorings, we have cabinets, we have lighting, the entire box comes to the site. So it's built in the factory, it's assembled there yeah. under the same building code, and then it's shipped and assembled on a foundation. And we yeah. have specific codes and regulations, as I'm sure you do as well. And I yeah. love that, you know, Carl, it's really genius that you see this innovation. I think it's also really unique that the assembly, the kit of parts is, is a super powerful way to build because all of the things you're touching on, we are in these shortages. We do have yeah. materials that it is getting difficult and more um, costly for us to, to use these materials. So I agree with you. I love that you're really seeing the effectiveness and we'd love to see you in this country. Yeah, but I really would love to come. One of my ambitions is to, to, to start building in the US, but I also want to start building in, in Australia or, or in Japan or whatever. So, but I need to take it step by step. Eh? So, so that's, uh, I need to find the right people to help me 
roll out this system and scale up this system. I love it. So just to kind of let you know, there is an organization that started in the U.S. It's called the Building, the Modular Building Institute, and that yeah. institute actually connects all international and national. So I definitely think you should check that out. I think it would be really good, Carl, for you to yeah. to see that. And I and I really hope that when you do come to the U.S., we are able to connect because I think it is connecting the conversation, using these skills and these building techniques to allow people to know that there are sophisticated systems like next-gen houses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now, in fact, I plan to come out uh, next quarter or, or the first quarter of next year because I want to meet with people and I want to, uh, to, to, to try to get some, some good connections, so to say. I follow the U.S. market very uh, close. So I know what's what's happening there, and uh, yeah, li like uh, at, at first everybody was uh, very uh, enthusiastic about Catera, and we all know what happened with them. And there are also another another few good uh, examples starting out now in in the U.S. using the same principle with a kit of parts uh, uh, building uh, system. And yes, on the other I, I agree with you. And and Katera, you know, they they were the largest conversation um, ah. four years ago. I was actually able to interview one of the um, he was a construction manager for Katera through System Build Lifestyles, one of the very first podcasts that Art of Construction and Devin Tilly and I um, had that conversation. The exciting mm. thing, though, Carl, is that they started opening this conversation. They allowed yeah. companies and consumers to start seeing that. You don't have yep. to build traditionally to actually do a project, right? We now have processes in place and a system build product that we can actually yep. deliver that same kind of quality. So it's nice right. to see that you have that same vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but also I, 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 I've, I've uh, looked at, uh, let's say, uh, publications from uh, McKinsey. Eh? Yeah. The, the, yeah. The, 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 the thing about uh, uh, from from uh, from from uh, project, uh, uh, from from. Uh, let me let me check it up. So, <laughs> <laughs> why don't you check that out? Well, it, what you're referring to is the McKinsey report that comes out, right. and basically it's a measurement tool telling people about the data that's happening not only in offsite construction but other areas of industry. And I think it's so valuable that you are researching and putting you know your mindset forward. I love that you're looking at Japan. I love that you're looking in Australia. We have a local organization here with the big vision called Vita Loose Development. And mm -hmm. Jessa Roebuck and her team are designing these not only um, modular and sustainable communities, but also these smart communities. It sounds like there's such great overlap and it looks like you're kind of in that same category. Yeah, right, right, right. I, I, I know them and, and uh, I, like I said, I follow a lot of the US uh, uh, because I think the U.S. is about two or three years ahead of the Netherlands. A lot of the inventions or things are duplicated or uh, in in the Netherlands, and we here in the Netherlands are, uh, as you know, we are we are we are traders. We we, we once uh, started in Manhattan and and swapped it for Suriname. That was not such a good deal, but anyway, and 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 well, while we speak our languages. We, and, and yeah, we, we, we like to be on the forefront of, uh, of developments. And most U.S. companies, if they go to Europe, they, 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 start in, they start in Holland, start in the Netherlands. Yeah. That's because the people are so great there. You know, the yeah, beautiful maybe. thing about your culture is that it's about working together, right? Yeah. Instead of separate and becoming more uh, aware of what problems we're facing and figuring out solutions. Construction is about solutions. That's how I see yeah. it these days. Carl, with closing, yeah. is there anything else that you'd like to add about your next-gen housing, houses? Uh, yeah, no, I hope to be in the, in the U.S., uh, let's say, very soon. And uh, that, that is what I would like to add. And, and there's a lot I can add or a lot I can, can say, but, but it, I, I understand it, take, it takes more because it becomes too long. And another thing is that uh, English is not my native language, eh? so it's, uh, I've, been a I've, I've been using it not so much lately, so I'm a bit rusty, so to say. 
I think you've done amazing. We've had the yeah, best okay. conversation, and I appreciate you being here today. Okay, thank you, and I appreciate you. Uh, yeah, you call, you ask me, asking me, and and I want to uh, thank the people who are watching this for their time to to, to watch this. So. So thank you again. This has been an amazing opportunity for us to not only talk about what's happening in our country, but what also is happening in the Netherlands. We are bridging the gap with offsite construction. Thank you so much for being here for another construction, offsite construction series.